What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm going to show you guys how to replace a lock on your sliding glass door or a patio door. We've got our door here that needs to be replaced. Um, I'm going to remove the door off the tracks here. You guys don't have to do this process. Only reason why I'm doing that is just to make sure that we get some decent lighting so you guys can see exactly what we're doing. So first thing I'm going to do is remove this door. Alright guys, so now that we've got this door out of the sunlight, you guys can see exactly what's going on. If you have a look at the back of the lock here, the reason why we're replacing it is the handle is completely broken. Unfortunately, you can't get parts when it comes to just the outer handle. So we're going to remove the whole um, door lock itself and then we're going to replace it with a new one. So the new one that I've got here is a Whitco Oxley. Um, there's a lot of different versions and a lot of different brands. They're all going to be pretty much exactly the same when it comes to replacing. So the first thing you're going to notice is that on the locking side, which is usually on the inside, actually always on the inside, there'll be two little screws on the side here. So they're the first things that we need to remove. That'll give us access to the actual inner screws. So if we remove these ones here first, they're very, very tiny screws, but in this case we don't really care because we're going to throw these away anyway. So now we can see there's access to the actual main screw. So we've got two screws running right through the body of the door, and that's what holds on the outer handle on the other side. So once again, remove these off. Might need a pair of pliers on the back of this one here simply because the handle is broken. So once again, reverse this one here off. Now that we've got that, the whole lock itself can come out. And you'll notice there's three holes. We've got the two top, uh, top and bottom holes. Those ones are designed to actually screw into the lock on the other side, which you guys will see in a second. And the one in the middle is the one that we use for our locking mechanism. So now we'll open up our new handle. It looks a little bit intimidating at first because there is a fair bit of parts that come with this, um, but it is fairly straightforward. And once you do it once or see it happen, um, it is fairly simple to do yourself. So we'll just remove all the little parts on the inside and then we'll go through it step by step. So we're going to start off with this component here. This one here is a locking mechanism that allows you to open and close your door. Now this one here sits on the inside of your door. Okay, so this one here sits like that. We've got two different size screws that we can use depending on the thickness of your door. So this one here isn't very thick, so we're going to use the shorter screws opposed to the longer screws. So like I said, there's a few extra components that, in, that come in the kit, and that's simply to give you um, a bit of flexibility depending on your type of door that you're installing. So what we're going to look at next is this little section here, which is the back lock, um, and it's got a little tail on the end of it. The reason that it has a tail on there is it simply slots through the back end of the door, and then that slots into the locking mechanism on the back, and when you do turn the key from the outside, that's what actually enables the lock to turn open and close. Now what you want to make sure with this, you'll notice on here there's a little um, notches all the way down along the tail, and that allows you to cut it depending on the thickness of your door. So this one here isn't very thick, um, so we'll get started on this one here. We've got a little back uh, backing plate, we just want to slot that in. Now in this case here, it doesn't matter which way it goes on, the simple reason for that is when we have a look at the key, we've got teeth on both sides of the key. So if you have teeth only on one side of the key, then generally you'd want the keyed side um, to be facing up, but in this case here we've got teeth on both sides, so it doesn't really matter which way it goes in. Now that we've got our backing plate on here, we're going to take our handle that sits on the outside and we're going to slot that in place just like that, and that side there is ready to go. What we're going to do now is take our measurement. If I put this hard up against the back of the door, you can see the tongue or the tail of it sticks out a fair bit and we're going to have to adjust that. So if we have a look now, when we actually slot this in, I'll just put this in on the outside so you guys can see how much play there is. You can see there we've got a little bit of play. We've got a few options. Number one, we can use a spacer that it comes with. If I use this spacer here, attach it to the back end, that'll give me that little bit of clearance. You don't have to use the spacer. So I'm gonna actually cut one more section just to show you guys how easy it is to cut this tail here. Um, you wanna make sure that you cut this tail, measure twice, cut once. If you ruin this and overcut it, there's no way of reversing it and you're gonna to have to go out and buy a new individual cylinder. So the, there's two ways to cut this. You can either use your pliers, use the sharp end on it, line it up with the teeth and we can simply cut that off or you can get your pliers once again and you can bend that back and forward until it snaps. So a nice and easy way, we'll snap this one here off, 
line that up with the groove, snap it off, and now we're ready to go. So we'll push our back end through first. You can see there, the tail just goes straight through the back. The little notches here that catch onto the screws go through the back once again. And now we're going to take our locking mechanism and make sure that that all lines up with the door. So we'll just twist that around until we lock it in place. And you can see there, now we've got a perfect fit. We'll take our screwdriver, uh, sorry, the uh, screws that it came with, and we'll just put them in by hand initially. And then we'll take our drill and drive these all in. Now that we've got that, this one here is completely flush. We'll do the same thing on the bottom. So once you've got your screws in, what you want to do then is just check it with the key. So if we put the key on the back side, we want to make sure it all operates smoothly and that we've actually cut it to the right length. So if you want to just take your key, turn it over. You can see there, it's a little bit tight to still turn that over. So what that means is we can actually cut the notch one more section off on the tail, or we can use our spacer. So in this case here, I'm going to use the spacer to show you guys exactly how to use the spacer also. So we'll back these screws here off. Get the spring out of the way. With that locking mechanism, once I find it. So now we've got that out of the way, we can attach our spacer. The spacer will also line up with your holes perfectly. So that just sits on the face like this. That'll give you that little bit extra clearance instead of having to cut one more notch off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn the key so that I can move this tail around and have it match up with my locking mechanism here. So we'll just line that up. Now that we've got that lined up, we can hold it by hand before we put the screws in, make sure everything's working. You can see that it's a lot smoother now. So now we can install our screws. And the bottom. Perfect. So now we're gonna take the other half of our lock we're gonna drop that into position. Now, depending on whether or this is a left or right hand, you can also turn the handle around, depending on which way you're gonna be, um, your, your door handle is installed. So this one here, we're gonna turn that around. We also have to line up the back notch with this little snip here, but instead of turning it with the key, we can actually turn over um, the locking section here. So that'll make it a little bit easier. So if we just position this right over the top, turn it over until it catches, that's now all lined up. We can see it's still functioning perfect. Test out the back key as well. And now we're ready to put our screws in back into the side. All right guys, so now we take our two little screws and slot them through the side of the doorway. That'll hold on our cover plate here. All right guys, so now we've got our door functioning perfect the way we want it to. What we're gonna do now is install our little catch here for our latch. So I'm gonna put this door back on the tracks and then show you guys how to install this and how to line it up perfectly. So we're gonna take off the old one first. Two screws is all that's holding this in. Get rid of this one here. Now what we're gonna do is we wanna line this up exactly with our new lock. So what I'm gonna do in this case here is we'll lock this into the actual door. If we slot that on, put our locking mechanism on, now we know exactly where this one is gonna line up. So I'm just gonna close the door slightly and then I'm gonna take my Sharpie and just make a little mark so that I know roughly where my new latch or catch is gonna go for the latch. Catch for the latch. So now we'll take our screws, line this one here up. We're only gonna put one screw in at the moment. We're gonna make sure that it latches, make any adjustments that we need to, and then we'll put in a second screw. So we'll test it out first. Needs to go up a little bit higher. And that's our perfect position. Okay, so we'll put in our last screw. 
So usually with these catches, they're usually locked on the outside um, and they're not usually installed this way. So you'll find that it's usually installed on its side like this and then we're able to actually screw the face in properly. But in this case here, uh, sorry, like this. Um, but in this case here, this one's sitting on the in inside of the door track. Um, so we're gonna have to do a little bit different this time around. Um, so I'm gonna remove this one here. Well, I've pre-drilled the holes so we can get our screws in and we're gonna install it uh, facing the sideways like this. But usually you find that it's actually installed on the side of the door frame like this. Um, but in this case, we're gonna have to actually install it on its side. So a little bit of a customization here. We'll remove that screw. So we'll put our cover plate on, line this one here up roughly. We can even put in our top screws from now. Because this one here's been installed in a little bit of a different way. Get them on by hand. Bottom screw. So now we've got our cover plate and our catch lined up. We can take our other screw, push that through the back and reposition it back where we had it before. Once again, test out the door. Perfect. So there you have it guys, that's how to replace your glass sliding door locks. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching Bill's How To.